Hi, this is Matthew Cruz in Creighton Radiology, and welcome to the mini lecture on renal anomalies. In this lecture, we'll discuss a variety of developmental or congenital renal abnormalities and the typical imaging features. Let's get started. The first anomaly we're going to discuss is horseshoe kidney. In this condition, the kidneys are fused in the midline at the lower pole. They are also more inferior in the abdomen relative to normal renal position. And that's because the embryologic ascent of the kidneys is stopped by the inferior mesenteric artery. At the right side of the slide, we see two axial images from two separate patients with horseshoe kidney. The connection in the midline may be comprised of renal parenchyma, as in the upper patient, or of a fibrous band, as in the lower patient. The lower patient also demonstrates the inferior mesenteric artery, as indicated by the white arrow, which has stopped the ascent of the kidneys, as you can see they're positioned in the mid-abdomen rather than the upper abdomen. Horseshoe kidney has normal ureteral insertions at the bladder. The right lower image is an excretory phase of an MR urogram. So contrast is within the renal collecting systems, ureters, and bladder. You can see that the lower pole of the renal parenchyma is fused in the midline, and the ureters are positioned in a normal location, both inserting at their respective portions of the bladder. This is often an asymptomatic condition. It's very common, occurring in one in four to 500 adults, but there are some complications that can occur. Patients with horseshoe kidney are at higher risk of renal stones, renal obstruction, especially UPJ obstruction, and they have slightly higher risk of several rare renal tumors, such as Wilms tumor and renal carcinoid. The next renal anomaly is crossed fused renal ectopia. The name really says it all in this case. Renal ectopia refers to the kidney in the incorrect location, and crossed fused describes that one kidney has crossed to the other side and fused with the other kidney. The image in the right upper aspect of the slide demonstrates two kidneys which are fused together in the right mid-abdomen. It turns out that the left kidney crossing to the right side is actually three times more common these patients also have normal ureter insertions, as indicated by this right lower image, which is a three-dimensional reconstruction from an excretory phase CT. You can see the kidneys fused in the right mid-abdomen, but with normal ureter insertions at the lateral aspects of the bladder. Most of these patients are asymptomatic, and this has a lower risk of complications, but some complications such as UPG obstruction, stones, and UTI can occur. Renal duplication is one of the most common congenital renal abnormalities. This refers to a separate upper pole and lower pole collecting system. There is also variable duplication of the ureter. The ureters may fuse into a single ureter just below the kidney in the mid portion, or they may have two completely separate ureters that insert into the bladder. This is typically an incidental finding and is often asymptomatic. It's seen in 0.7% of the healthy adult population and 2 to 4% of patients presenting with urinary tract symptoms. At the right side of the slide, we see two examples of renal duplication. In the upper CT image, you notice that the left kidney is slightly larger than the right, and there are two fat containing renal sinuses. This is due to the duplication of the collecting system. In the ultrasound image at the mid portion of the right aspect of the slide, we see duplication of the collecting system with two fat containing renal sinuses. The echogenic renal sinus fat is what's noted within the kidney. Renal duplication has a characteristic pattern of complications in some patients. If the patient has complete duplication of the ureters, the upper pole is prone to obstruction. The ureter may have an ectopic exertion, for example, in females into the vaginal cavity, and it also may be associated with ureterocele. This results in hydronephrosis of the upper pole moiety, 
which may eventually atrophy and look cystic. The lower pole moiety has more characteristic vesicoureteral reflux, and this presents a risk of scarring if ascending infection. This pattern of complication is known as the weigert meyer rule. At the right lower aspect of the slide, we see an image from a voiding cystourethrogram. The bladder is filled with contrast, and reflux of contrast is noted up to the left ureter and left kidney. But only half of the kidney is seen, which looks like the lower pole. This is known as the drooping lily sign. So this demonstrates reflux of contrast into the lower pole moiety and no filling of the upper pole moiety, which is not seen on the image. The next renal anomaly is autosomal dominant polycystic kidney disease. This typically presents in adulthood with progressive renal cysts and renal dysfunction. 50% of patients will have end-stage renal disease by the age of 60. On imaging, these are often markedly enlarged kidneys with variable replacement of the renal parenchyma by cysts of varying sizes. Majority of cysts are simple, containing fluid and demonstrating fluid signal on ultrasound, CT, and MRI, but hemorrhagic or proteinaceous cysts can also occur. The complications from autosomal dominant polycystic kidney disease include end-stage renal disease most commonly. Cyst rupture may be a cause of acute presentation and pain, or cyst infection, a cause of fever. In the right upper aspect of the slide, we see an axial CT image through the kidneys. You see massive enlargement of the kidneys with replacement by multiple cysts. This is a non-contrast exam, which is very common in this disease due to renal dysfunction. In the right lower aspect of the slide, we see an MRI example of autosomal dominant polycystic kidney disease. You see the massively enlarged kidneys replaced by numerous T2 bright cysts. There are also many cysts noted within the liver. Autosomal dominant polycystic kidney disease has several noteworthy associations. One of the most classic is intracranial aneurysms. These tend to be the saccular or ball-shaped aneurysms, so-called berry aneurysms, which have a higher risk of rupture. Several guidelines would suggest brain imaging in someone with a new diagnosis of autosomal dominant polycystic kidney disease. Additionally, this disease is associated with hypertension and cysts in other organs, such as the liver or pancreas. It used to be thought that the disease was associated with higher risk of renal cell carcinoma, but currently this is thought to be related to prolonged dialysis, which infers a higher risk of RCC no matter the cause. These patients do undergo surveillance imaging for solid renal lesions or indeterminate renal lesions, which can be a quite difficult task given the size and complexity of their kidneys. At the right side of the slide, we see another example of a non-contrast CT exam in a patient with autosomal dominant polycystic kidney disease. You can see the kidneys are enlarged and replaced by numerous hypodense cysts. There are several indeterminate cysts which may be hemorrhagic, indicated by the red arrowheads. There are renal stones indicated by the yellow arrows. And there's a transplant kidney in the right pelvis. Conversely, autosomal recessive polycystic kidney disease typically presents in childhood. The most common neonatal form often presents with renal failure shortly after birth. Severe cases where there is in utero involvement may also have oligohydramnios, pulmonary hypoplasia, or neonatal death. A less common childhood or adolescent form has less severe renal dysfunction but there is an inverse relationship with hepatic disease, and these patients have more severe congenital hepatic fibrosis. Perinatal imaging is usually performed with ultrasound, and this demonstrates enlarged hyperechoic or echogenic kidneys with numerous tiny cysts. The ultrasound image in the right upper aspect of the slide demonstrates an enlarged kidney in a newborn. This measures 9.8 centimeters whereas typically newborn kidneys are on the range of five to six centimeters. The renal cortex, medulla, and pyramids are difficult, if, if not impossible, to differentiate 
as the kidney is diffusely hyperechoic, and the white arrows point to numerous tiny hypoechoic cysts. Subsequently, these kidneys will atrophy as the patient grows and may actually be difficult to find with ultrasound. These patients may require renal transplantation if they have the neonatal form with severe renal disease or liver transplantation if they have the adolescent form with severe liver disease. This concludes the lecture on renal anomalies. Thank you.